Hello. Uh, we have brought you today the like a short wrap on the biggest news stories of 2016. but that is not going to be very easy is it yes uh, 2016 was very exciting and very busy for all of us not only it it kept us busy throughout the year a lot of things has happened and it 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 was a crazy year it yes. challenged us it was unpredictable every day there was a news break that we won't believe that yes. just happened and <coughs> it was honestly a very very interesting year yes. so uh, and what we going to do today is give you a wrap of the biggest news stories of 2016 so deepana yeah we shall we should start i think okay. and uh, hasan i think as far as national politics is concerned and especially in 2016 it was a big big year for the for 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 political parties for uh, national news basically like we said it was an all it was an all rounder the year like it 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 was an earthquake if we may say of sorts so we'll start with the five state assembly polls uh the assembly polls that happened in may uh we had tamil nadu we had west bengal we had kerala we had puducherry and we had assam five very crucial places going to assembly polls and bjp came out victorious bjp made a huge mark right at the beginning of the year yes uh, bjp wanted a congress mukt bharat and that's what they showed in the uh, state assembly elections in the five state um assam marked the end of 15 year co- uh, congress uh, rule yeah, and, yeah. And, and and but uh, bjp this uh, assam politics afterwards like in the other states which we saw tamil nadu and yeah no uh, we uh, bjp uh, why bjp's win was so historic uh, hasan was because congress had ruled assam like you said right mm-hmm. now congress had ruled hasan uh, ruled uh, assam for 15 years and that was the first win for bjp in the northeastern state mm-hmm. yes it was honestly bjp did not make a huge win in any other state apart But from assam but it gained uh, a lot of seats in other states where it, including tamil nadu I yeah think. true tamil nadu aidmk came back she beat all odds steered mm-hmm. aidmk to a huge historic win demolished dmk uh shut her detractors up right away because there was a there, there were cases piling up against jalanda mm-hmm. there was a huge odds were stacked up against the leader but she emerged victorious she came up with a massive win in west bengal mamta retained her win uh, west bengal remained trinamool congresses and left again just like congress was decimated left in cal in west bengal was reduced to rubble it was unbelievable that a party which ruled it which ruled the state for over 8 decades mm-hmm. you know was nowhere anywhere like in west bengal there was no mention of left but they uh, came back in kerala they retained yeah they uh, thankfully they took comfort from the kerala results the left parties because the ldf won almost 91 i think 91 seats in kerala mm-hmm. uh Congress had just one win, and it was not a very big win, though. Yes. And Small state, Puducherry. Yes. But I think it's a comfortable win for them. Yeah. But, but despite, I mean, um, in the, all the elections, we saw uh, Rahul Gandhi become emerging as uh, he was criticized for oh, the yeah. poor performance of yeah. Congress, and that was pretty sad for him. Yeah. No, because uh, he the the not just. Uh, not just bjp not just the opposition mm-hmm. but rahul gandhi was criticized by his own people because of the lack of leadership that he showed the lack of leadership uh and he 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 was he was he touted as the next prime ministerial candidate for 2019 mm-hmm. general elections everybody is talking about rahul gandhi so for a person who is at least in the run for the prime minister you need to hold your party together but congress apart from receiving a massive drubbing during the elections mm-hmm. uh like we were discussing the the huge political crisis that happened in many congress uh, led states yeah, yes and and you uh, i mean of all this what showed was um, that congress along with the other opposition parties they they couldn't give a strong opposition to the bjp and this is what we saw uh, this is something which is congress congress is not able to emerge as the party it was before bjp came to power it i think congress hasn't congress lacks that unifying factor mm-hmm. 
यू नो कांग्रेस हैज नॉट बीन एबल टू यूनिफाई द ऑपोजिशन एंड राइट नाउ इट इज सो इजी टू यूनिफाई द ऑपोजिशन लाइक देर इज एन एंटी बीजेपी वेव दैट रन थ्रू पोलिटिकल पार्टीज इन जनरल लाइक एवरी पार्टी विच इज नॉट बीजेपी they are all against bjp and they are vehemently against bjp because they have taken some really bold steps yes but uh, the way they put demonetization against black money and corruption yeah it it's a very thin line you i mean it, it's going to be a dangerous uh, it's a very dangerous line for any party whether they want to support demonetization or not because whatever side they take it shows whether they are uh, against corruption or against black money and uh the people will never uh, come to your support if you are against black money and corruption no that is true but uh, hasan talking about speaking about demonetization if you are talking about demonetization from a political point of view i th- i th- i really think that what the opposition did i mean their tact was right i mean they were asking all the right questions but i think the way they present themselves is just wrong because if you mm-hmm. see all of rahul's speeches all of for in fact for that matter even bjp's uh, pro demonetization uh, uh, speeches they are not much different and you know the opposition has not been able to nail the government that way mm-hmm. because demonetization okay the government has said that black money uh black money holders will be punished and terrorism has been stopped that apart it has caused a huge pain to the common man yes not just the common man uh, there are certain important bills which needs to be discussed in the parliament winter session but we saw yeah. a very poor performance yeah, yeah. we i'm uh, it was very uh, sad the way they behaved it was shameful and it was really shameful rajya sabha rajya sabha did just 18% of um, productivity, productivity wise and yeah. lok, lok sabha had just 16% which is yeah. very poor i think if you were a student you would fail <laughs> that is very true no but then that's another play, that's another that's the another example of the opposition failing the country you know mm-hmm. as a if a nation just like you need a good ruling mm-hmm. you need a very very strong opposition in fact you need a stronger opposition because that's how the best comes out mm-hmm. but the opposition you saw only stalling the gov- only stalling the parliament's winter session but the winter session was a total washout because of this they were it was not just the opposition it was the bjp also who stalled the parliament stalled the parliament true 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 uh, bj in fact in fact that's what i'm saying so i think it was a combined effort mm-hmm. where both the bjp and the congress Uh, it's wrong to say the congress congress uh, if i have to talk about opposition it will be samajwadi party it was the bahujan samaj pa- party of mayawati it was a uh, congress Jantadali. it was uh, it was janta dal united it was rjd all of them combined did not let the parliament function did not let the winter session in fact just one bill was passed mm-hmm. the disability bill is the only bill that was passed by both the, the houses. houses yeah houses, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, after all this, two thousand sixteen was a very politically charged year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I was mean, a. It was a. Some of it is still happening right now. Today, um, there were reports about some some uh, Samajwadi Party possibly going for a split. Yeah, 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 yeah. No political uh, UP elections are. I think it's. I think two thousand sixteen will just not go away quietly till thirty first night. I think we'll have news breaks coming in every second. and a lot of them will spill out to 2017 of course they will spill out to 2017 but now let's go back let's go back a bit and yeah. wrap the 2016 first properly and uh, you were saying something about political charge i wanted to i wanted to add something there mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of political crisis in 2016 in uh, and especially in congress led states uh, i believe the whole point was to of bjp or the central uh, government was to uh, project that the congress led states are not being handled properly like you remember for in uh, uttarak uh, uttarakhand's uh, case yes um rebel leaders uh, yeah. of the congress they tried to topple the government of harish rawat correct but you know it's not just congress led like what we have seen in 2016 is center uh, the central government trying to uh, enter into the state government 
yeah. trying to show their power over state governments. Correct. I mean, uh, it was uh, Uttarakhand, but then uh, you said like you know how Congress try BJP sorry BJP tried to show the negative sides of Congress governments across. Indian states. Yeah. Right? And even in Manipur, we saw um, the Manipur, Manipur crisis. Okay. Uh, the BJP government came and blamed right. it was all happening because of Congress. Right, uh, right. Government. No, so that's exactly what I'm saying. So politically, it was such a uh, tug of war between uh, Congress and BJP. It was as if BJP was not happy with uh, majority states. With but them. Yeah, but, but like, you know, some of it is still happening. Like today, Arunachal Pradesh, for example. We have uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah. really going to have a new chief minister. Yeah, it, 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 it has. It has. It has. It's a government which is has uh, NDA's backing. Uh, yeah, the the the, the today's uh, development. In fact, uh, mm. I I can't remember the new prime minister, uh, no new senior chief minister's name, but. Uh, Aruna, the today's development though, uh, Hassan, is quite different from what I am talking about. Because in mid-2016, there were two states, especially, there, were, there was uh, Harish Rawat's government in Uttarakhand and there was Nabam Tuki's government. Mm -hmm. These two governments saw massive interference from the central government. And a little later, a, we just discussed Puducherry, Congress won. BJP was very smart to appoint a BJP governor in Puducherry. So these tiny things, Kiran Bedi became the Puducherry governor. Mm -hmm. So these tiny little political maneuvers uh, made for very interesting political scenario in the country. Like I think we were, I think 20, 2016 as a journalist was a very interesting time to be. Yes. Because you lots know. Lots of things happened. Yeah. And lots of things kept us busy and lots of stories to cover. Yeah. And uh, then while we were jostling with all this, we had a new debate. Like we always knew those two words, but we knew it better this mm -hmm. time. The whole debate around nationalism and intolerance. Yes. Uh, and it all started in January early this year. Yeah. We had to, um, there was a sudden uh, um, a decision which was passed by the BJP government, which would force all educational institutes to hoist the national flag. Right, right. That was, I think, was the start of this debate on nationalism. In yeah, India. almost. Like we cannot pinpoint also what started because there were such tiny, tiny, tiny pieces that became finally one and became this major. You know, there was a huge nationalist drive around the country. There was new debate around nationalism, se nationalist sentiments, intolerance sentiments, and so on and so forth. But like you said, yeah, national fa like uh, when the government announced the news that all educational institutes have to appoint, uh, have to hoist the national flag, there was a huge uproar from the again opposition. Uh, saying that BJP is appropriating the national flag or is appropriating like for example we saw Supreme Court observing how it made it uh, it observed that citizens uh, must stand up for the national anthem when it is played before the screening of a film there is no debate on that it's very clear what Supreme Court, court said that yeah. it is a statutory obligation right. of every citizen to stand up before uh, when the national anthem is being played and right. it has to be played before the screening of every film right right but uh, we still had a lot of debate around yeah, it. Yeah, and it's there been a lot of these debates. There were um, a lot of incidents which happened in 2016, which kind of ignited uh, the debate on nationalism and intolerance. Correct. There, were, um, there was Rohit Vemula's suicide, episode, suicide, right, which, right, uh, sparked and brought casteism into the national uh, on, on a national platform. On a national oh platform. yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And then for sure. there was uh, Kanaya Kumar and two of his friends who were arrested on the charge of sedition. Oh and, yeah. And as we saw in in the entire um, the way it was played, there was a video which was played uh, about uh, um, about them shouting anti-national slogans, and later it turned out it was a doctored video. Yeah, they w the the doctored video showed uh, the doctored video showed uh, Kanai and his friends hailing Afzal Guru as a national hero, which was actually a doctored video. It was it was not a right. Mm -hmm. It was not a yes. correct video. It was a doctored. So video. all these all these debates uh, and all these incidents which happened, they kind of 
brought nationalism and intolerance into the limelight. Uh, rem remember, we were just having a conversation about uh, celebrities also became a part of it. Yeah, yeah, Hassan. In fact, the whole I think the intolerance debate rose because of the nationalism debate. You know, it was. Uh, there was a point there was a point in the middle of 2016 when the country was suddenly divided into uh, the anti uh, the pro establishment uh, people yes. and the anti establishment people and if you are anti establishment which basically translates into if you are a liberal you are an anti national you you do not love your nation as much as we do and that's when uh, learned people, Gyan Peter Award, uh, Award receivers, they were they were uh, literary uh, eminent personalities, actors like Amir Khan, who spoke out fearlessly and quite openly against what was happening in the country, and which was necessary. I think uh, one thing that I think is was very like uh, notable about 2016. Was there was a lot of talking, if you remember? Yes, a lot of talking, and the talking continues. The, yeah, even now. yeah. Even they, now. They, 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 they spoke. We are just one day is almost over. Just one day away from. We are just uh, one day away, but the news has not start stopped coming in. Uh, the debate has not stopped. There is still a intolerance, nationalistic nationalism debate. But I think Hassan, this will not be as big an issue in twenty seventeen. But you know, um, yeah. although, 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 but since you mentioned big talk. Big talk reminded me of something which is even bigger news in 2016. Yeah, but I think 2016 was so massive and so exhausting. I think it's fair enough that we forget few, but not yes. this one. And this was Trump's election as the next US president. Yeah, it, it, that, we, that was a massive, massive... We are all shocked by the way. Shocked. It, there were few people who were crying in our news desk. We, we just we, we really had a few couple of people who who wept because they they were they, they we couldn't believe it we just couldn't believe that Trump won and like us there were a lot of people across uh, the world who didn't quite believe when the results were out of uh, yeah who the would believe uh, Hassan that a person who actually went on record to threaten de to deport illegal immigrants uh, ban muslims from the country uh, tear up uh, free trade deals and on top of all that when we are leaving 2016 and moving into 2017 a man was actually insulting women and in the most unabashed manner so it was quite shocking that a country which is which calls itself great will elect a person like oh, Barack Obama the current like the outgoing president he took it in a in extremely statesman like way the news but I'm sure he was shocked as hell everybody was shocked but you know uh, <coughs> the results of the Trump election uh, the US presidential election shows us one thing which is uh, not only the media even mm, like um, globally most nations ignored and which was the power of social media as well as um, how uh, the focus like you know the focus was so much on Trump and what he is and he is not as a person yeah. that we didn't realize when he was going and talking to people about the issues which mattered like jobs un uh, unemployment blue collar jobs oh yes. true 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 and true. this is what I think got him the election. Uh, I, I think that's a that's a very good point, Hassan. In fact, uh, m I think media and Hillary Clinton, ca Hillary Clinton's team, I think both of them underestimated what a powerful competitor Trump was. Because Trump, I think Trump and his team were quietly doing the job. They were going to their respective uh, electoral uh, vote banks and they were uh, pursuing their votes while the media and it's not just the US media it's worldwide we were busy making fun of Trump but at the end guess who had the last laugh Trump we, Donald Trump yeah and uh, in 2017 too I think uh, uh, Hassan that he will see he's not a statesman mm -hmm. he's not a politician he's a businessman so he's going to ruffle a lot of feathers in 2017. He's already started doing it. Yeah, like there'll be no status quo in, in in as far as Trump is concerned, there won't be a status quo. It'll either be a good thing or a bad thing. But you know that's what 2016 was all about, like changing the status quo, whether it was politics, whether it was policies, 
even parliament correct everywhere no i think parliament wise our uh, mps are okay. pretty much uh, sorted there they every every session is pretty much a wash out and 2016 was no less uh, i think all most of the sessions were a wash out the wo winter session being the worst of them mm -hmm. uh, but but that i mean that apart apart from that moving on from trump i think going back to the whole uh, we uh, we had we had bigger political news mm -hmm. see this is what i was talking about we are so exhausted with all the news that we covered throughout 2016 there are there are news that we are going to forget you can comment on our feed right now and you can tell us the news that we are forgetting to cover and we could start talking about that maybe but for now we will go back to the next biggest political news that happened in 2016 yes um, jalalita passed away this year and it left a lot of people very uh, deeply hurt deeply hurt heartbroken and aidmk is literally was in the lurch like they jalalita never groomed her second uh, in command mm -hmm. there was nobody to take over from jalalita like in a political swift uh, movement uh, paneer selvam was sworn in but like you saw today uh, uh, hasan shashikala is going to be the next yes uh, she was um Uh, appointed as the next general secretary of AIDMK right. and most likely she is going to take uh, office tomorrow yeah uh, and but uh, there are also speculations by the way hasan that she might actually make it to the chief minister but we don't know that yet there are still mm -hmm. speculations we have our sources we keep updating uh, stories we keep putting out opinion pieces you can check it out on firstpost.com uh, but for now yeah like we were talking i'm sorry to cut you off but yeah no okay so um long story cut short like no sasikala uh, sasikala was uh, jalalita's aid and right. she was with her uh, from uh, for many years right so uh, and being as the gen next general secretary i don't think she should actually go for uh, tamil nadu cm post and because the party right now needs somebody like jalalita who could keep the people together and we saw uh, i mean last two days a uh, rebellion uh, people have already been talking about jalalita's uh, death in the circumstances under which she right. passed away right. and uh, right. the high court uh, has already observed and it high court ju high court judge yeah uh, had observed that why couldn't a body be exhumed because right. even the high court uh, judge uh, said that he also has some sort of uh, mm, she had doubts doubts yeah. over yeah. the jalalita's death over Correct. the way the whole thing was uh, managed and Correct. public records or health records been asked to be made public correct i think aidmk is uh, one of the topics that's going to rule first half of 2017 2017 because once shashikala takes over see dmk is quiet right now because they don't want to face the anger of the people from tamil nadu because they will see it as dmk's dirty uh, like if i may use the word dirty politics because amma has recently passed away mm -hmm. and you are already swooping in to take in uh the chair but hasan i think 2017 will be very crucial year for chennai mm -hmm. for tamil nadu politics because and you are right you know some of the indicators uh, indicators uh, were already there like the way bjp um, made its presence felt towards the funeral during the funeral right oh, right the right, was there right, and right. He two more senior leaders of BJP were there, which Venkai is the Prime Minister and, and Venkai Naidu. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them were there yeah. at the funeral. So um, we um, we are not going to go into 2017. And But wait, wait, we are missing out the biggest story again. Again, that's exactly what we are doing. We are going on and on like about so many things. We missed out the Indo-Pak relationships, yes. which uh, which mm, again managed to. Uh, the surgical strikes that happened that was another news like just the way demonetization came as a shock surgical strike was like a was a massive breaking news you know another thing that is noted should be noted here hasan if you if you if you see every big major news started as a tiny news alert like before they uh, before they announced surgical strike uh, TV channels were flashing, saying army will address the media. So when you say army will address the media, you are like, okay, army will address the media. We are ready. We are ready to listen to what they are saying. And they they come bam with a news like we went inside Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and we 
demolish their terrorist bunker so surgical strike was one such one another huge news that caught india by surprise bjp government was lauded for its effort opposition as usual cried foul because mm. uh i can't remember what they cried while they about went up to say that they had conducted surgical strikes in the past as well yeah but, no but, but those are again uh, no but that is actually true hasan because all surgical strikes are not made public but so we don't know that yet but the whole point is if you had conducted surgical strikes and they were successful you should have come out and publicized it but you know uh, they for now uh, when surgical strikes the fact that we had to actually come out and talk about surgical strikes right. what happened in 2016 two incidents which basically showed how um, open we have kept ourselves open to threats right. pathan court air base air base my i'm sorry pathan court air base the way it was attacked right. it showed some serious flaws in our security Correct. then again you re attack oh yeah oh yeah both the oh, incident yeah. showed that we have kept ourselves very vulnerable and no matter how many surgical strikes we conduct or we may have conducted we have lost our people too we have lost our people yeah. and we need to ensure that everything is properly secured yeah or because if you see hasan that punjab border that side we are extremely vulnerable on the side and i think uh, during during just after the pathan court attack and the uri attack which happened very close to each other like not very close but around like in the matter of 6 months i think it happened or less than that i don't remember really remember i think uh, pathan court happened in january mm -hmm. right yeah. pathan court happened in january so you are attack in september you are attack in september so you know when you have two such major attacks with such heavy indian army casualty the government gets up and takes notice because like you said you are vulnerable and that's why even india pak relationship like like hit a new low if you see india pak relationship has always been either ebb and flow mm -hmm. like there is a high and there is a low there is a high and there is a low and i think 2016 and it is ended also on that note it's ended on the lowest of the notes because of these three uh but uh, you incidents. know uh, this um, cross border terrorism and that was not the only issue um which india should have looked at in 2016 right. like you know we talked about the china economic uh, corridor right cpc right how, yeah. how we are increasingly becoming locked from different areas correct so when i said like you know okay, we need to uh, increase our safety and we need to keep an eye on our all, neighbors uh, our neighbors this is the things which should have been become a major uh, topics right and they were discussed very heavily but still i think we missed the part of the security that security yeah there were there were security there lapses there are flaws yeah, in yeah. lapses in our security there were major security lapses but okay uh, honestly if we keep going this way we'll sit here for all day long and we'll still keep talking about the biggest news stories and they will never end so what we'll do is we'll quickly give you a wrap we'll quickly point out the news stories which caught the public imagination which kept the nation busy which kept the world busy um and we are not going to include entertainment stories here or any other social media trends here uh there was triple talaq there was a whole debate around triple talaq which was uh welcomed by the in fact it was started by the government it the government had floated this question at the law commission had uh, floated a question at and the muslim personal law board mm -hmm. had a huge opposition to that because uh triple talaq is uh you know is one of the at least it was one of the most talked about topics yes, in the muslim community yes it started as um, as an application to right. uh, find out the validity of triple talaq and uh, challenging the validity of triple talaq and that it turned into this whole debate on uniform civil code right right so i mean this was Uh, something which we will hear again in 2017 in 2017, 2017. yeah that will that will but the other big news was uh, of uh, alcohol ban in oh. bihar oh yeah alcohol ban in bihar was a major news because everybody thought and in fact not just thought it was uh, it is nitish kamar it was a very calculated move mm -hmm. uh, because nitish as you know jdu a socialist government uh, the whole he's going the welfare way he's uh, he's uh, he's trying to get to the uh, he's trying to get the mandate for 2019 he's already started working towards it uh, hasan uh, and securing 
in fact there are numbers which show after the alcohol ban crime rates uh, general drunk behavior in the state which is pretty uh, the crime rate is pretty high in bihar uh, things have become better or at least the police records tell us mm -hmm. so and i think we should uh, like at, like near the end of this discussion now that we are nearing the end and i'm sure we are in fact sure we have missed a lot of um, before we news. before we end uh, our session i would like to talk about uh, you see in in 2016 uh, among the incidents which we happened while we talked about uri attack the kashmir unrest was another bigger uh, biggest of course, issue of, of course, uh, biggest news of, of 2016 it it all started with uh, the killing of um, hizbul mujahideen commander burhan wani and then it saw it turned into this um, movement anti india it was movement a, it, was, it was a civil movement yeah it, it was, was a, it turned into this anti india movement which continued for the longest part of 2016 yeah it was over and over right now it has calmed down yeah but yeah. it has uh, it has raised so many issue lots of issues but in, uh, in and around kashmir uh, interestingly uh, no report we don't have any reports about this it's just an observation and it's sort of my observation but uh, have you noticed that the kashmir stone pelting and the kashmir unrest went down massively after the demonetization uh a uh, demonetization announcement which happened on 8 november like it had reduced fairly but kash the, like there were there were there was no st stone pelting there were no there were no skirmishes reported from uh, kashmir uh, post november like i think people were um, tired of the violence the way it affected their life and i think uh, government gave them a bigger uh, reason to worry about than stone pelting uh, than sorry than the unrest and the whole uh, debate around uh, uh, the india indian government's interference and the fact that kashmiris are not really happy with the pdp government this year also saw mehbooba mufti coming as becoming the first woman mm -hmm. chief minister of the state uh, but i think now we can uh, i think we have covered almost everything that we wanted to cover and but but before we wrap up the year the coming year right when we start 2017 february is going to be extremely crucial because february we have our union budget and february we have our slated uttar pradesh assembly election which is which will coincide coincide with uh, election in three other states uttarakhand punjab and goa right Yes. So four states go to assembly like go to elections in early 2017 and we just hope that 2017 is as exciting as 2016. That's that's that. that that's the hope and here's wishing you a very happy new year from both of us and from first post team. Please tune in next week again to watch us live. Thank you.